Uh, the second conference that we've done like this, and, and we really kind of want to make this uh, our a little bit informal. Deborah and I this morning put together some slides to go a little bit over the history uh, and sort of where we are now, but we want to spend some time um, sharing with folks uh, with uh, sharing with folks uh, the ideas uh, about what we could be doing and, and uh, how we can kind of keep this uh, conference going, um, some tips that we have just for conference goers who are here. Uh, so I'll start off, and at some point I'll, I'll uh, just kind of turn it over to Deborah and let Deborah pick up on some of this. Uh, we started off, oh, ooh, it's about uh, a year ago, two years ago in uh, uh, November, um, when we uh, developed uh, and started uh, building a small little shack, or in October, building a small little shack of, uh, that we called the Satori Mental Health Center, uh, an attempt to try and do some video streaming um, on that little parcel of land and, and have students come in and work. Uh, later, it moved to a larger location, and uh, it uh, uh, the, later uh, it moved to a larger. We called it uh, the Center for and, uh, Counselor uh, Education and Second Life. Uh, the, later, um, it moved trying to, to open it up to a, a wider train uh, training purpose. So, what we do here, and part of what we do here, is we provide Second Life space uh, and support for counseling instructors. Uh, trying to meet in world with classes. In the room you're sitting in is where uh, where counseling instructors will meet with their classes, and some of the counseling instructors have uh, access to the land and have places on the land where they can uh, do their own building and have their own class meetings, and and we'll talk about that more. Deborah, you want to talk about design and the the initial building and and what we did with. Uh, that because we've been in two different, lo three different locations now. Certainly. Um, the building that you're in was actually our second design. Our first building that was a little tiny, boxy shaped um, center that we really thought we would just do kind of mock counseling in and a little bit of training. When we decided to, to move to a larger location and actually to have a conference, we started building this building. And it, it evolved over a couple of iterations um, and I'm getting a message that my mic is is making too much noise so I will try and fix that um, but as we built it on our first site and have since moved it with us to all these different locations so the building that you're in was our original conference building but it's been picked times and um, the nice thing about Second Life is it's much easier easier to move a building than it is in, in real life. So we actually are able to pack all this up and move it to our new location and go from there. Marty, yeah, let me fix my mic. And yeah, I'll, uh, I'll pick it up. Um, after we uh, decided to uh, move out of the small little shack, the Satori Mental Health Center, um, uh, I went out and started uh, purchasing prefab buildings um, to see if we could get something that looked like a modern um, type of building and Deb said who had, and Deb had been doing some building and said uh, let me take a shot at it and let me see what we can construct in terms of uh, building for here and she came up uh, with this design which we've kind of carried with us uh, from place to place uh, interesting changes the first place that we were at um, the uh, person that we were renting the land from uh, stopped paying their tier after we had paid them and uh, we were luckily at the end of our tier we were about ready to repay them uh, a tier again and uh, found out that one day we couldn't get into the site so we pleaded with Linden Labs and they uh, did a nice job of letting us get in there for 36 hours and clear off the build um, and this was a week before we were going to give a presentation on the center at a national uh, it was where we were at a national um, center, uh, going to, to, uh, to a national conference to talk about uh, going uh, the to, development to, of the center. We had to do a quick rebuild in another location. Uh, the well, we did that rebuild in a second location, 
And last week, uh, half of the island was sold and sold to another um, a provider who uh, on the island decided to build a disco uh, with lots of bling, driving the, uh, the computing power, the sim, completely down. Uh, so we went back to the person who we're doing land with, and they found us uh, this location, which has really had some great, great uh, computing power. So we feel, we feel comfortable with it today. Who knows what's going to happen next week. Uh, but we're being nice to our neighbor, and Deb has uh, sent a card over and explained we're not going to be all crazy and running around the island like this all the time. Um, we're just This just happens to be the week that we have our large conference. Um, so this is the third build and a third location, and, and uh, we're able to, I think, economize a little bit more than we had in previous locations. And you can see well, some of the... the good yeah. I suppose the good news in that is that we've gotten really good at moving. And in Second Life, <laughs> it is something that people do fairly often. We are very quick at packing up, getting things relocated, and getting set up. So you wouldn't know that, that a week ago, this was just empty desert. And today, we all have this nice building to sit in, and, and we're ready to go. We talked about the sudden move, yeah. And Deb uh, just talked about that uh, in terms of making talked the move. About that. The purpose of this place is really, it's by request for counselor training. It's open for anybody who wants to do counselor training. Uh, I don't want to get into, uh, although there are people who do it very well in here and in other forms, um, I don't want to use the center for counseling clients. Um, and that's one of the restrictions I've put on um, the use of the center and also some of the work of the scholars. This is for counselor educators for supervisors, folks who are doing uh, training of counselors or preparing instructional uh, training of counselors. And um, right now, we're not ready to move into that space. There are some folks who do that really well here in Second Life. And uh, in that sense, uh, we, have a, uh, we, you know, we have a good support network. You'll be hearing from some of those folks throughout the conference. Uh, places and people who will be doing this uh, type of work here, type of counseling work here. We started another project called the Scholar in Residence Program, and the Scholar in Residence Program uh, we, uh, was a way of getting counselor educators into Second Life. Uh, folks in campuses. Uh, here uh, in, in universities. Uh, many universities are picking up SIMs and sites to be able to have university sites. And on there, you have a whole grouping of different types of disciplines, which has its advantages. But at the same time, um, you also have uh, the issues of not being able to connect with uh, like-minded uh, folks who are trying to develop the same kind of pedagogy that you are in this environment. So we did this, uh, we decided to do this scholar in residence. And uh, in this area, we have some skyboxes that we've set up. People sign up for the scholar in residence pro uh, program. And uh, as part of that program, they have six months uh, in Second Life. And uh, this is from one of our.